Nai Govanen. Welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek. And in this video, I'm going to address a question that was raised by somebody who follows me on social media named Gershom von Abraham. At least that's his handle. And the question is rather pertinent in light of my recent video about Morgoth and Sauron and why they can't change their forms after a certain point. Because this question deals with when Baron was reincarnated, did he re was he put back into a body with two hands or one? Because of course Baron loses one of his hands to Karkaroth escaping from Angband because he puts the Silmaril in his face trying to protect Luthien and then Karkaroth bites off the hand and then goes nuts because of the Silmaril burning in his innards. And the question is, does Baron after he dies, subsequently, when in the hunt for Karkaroth, he ends up getting killed by Karkaroth, who then mutually kills who on the Hound. Baron dies, and then Luthien dies after that, and then Luthien makes Mondos let both of them go, because she's so good at making him feel pity, which nobody else has ever done. And Monwe gets word from Iluvatar that, you know, they can kind of make their own rules here, and they basically give him a choice. You can go back to Middle-earth and live as a mortal, or you can reincarnate here in Valinor and be fine, and then Baron just goes his own way. Baron's case, of course, is completely unique because elves are the only ones who normally get reincarnated that are, you know, of, of the kinds of beings that aren't, you know, the Ainur because they're supposed to be immortal in the sense that they at least live as long as the earth does. Men are not supposed to do that. Once they die, they're supposed to go to the halls of Mondos for a short period of time, and then their spirit goes wherever it goes, and the Silmarillion is, you know, kind of agnostic on that point. The elves don't know what happens to their spirits after death. They just have you know, some idea that they are at least supposed to last beyond the end of the world. So, men aren't supposed to be reincarnated, which means there's really not a good set of cases to compare barons to. Uh, but I think we can make a few pretty good reasonable assumptions based on the facts that we have from other things. One of those being... You know, if the elves, by nature of being incarnate, have a memory of their own bodies imprinted kind of on their fea, which is what I talked about in my previous video about Morgoth and Sauron, presumably so do men. I mean, one, one might argue that, of course, men don't need that because men, since they aren't really meant to be reincarnated, would never really need to have that kind of relationship between their spirit and body so that they could be reincarnated. But then again, in a you know, in an ideal world the elves would never need to be reincarnated either. So why would that necessarily be the case? So, you know, you could the argument would be that men the plan isn't for them to be reincarnated. Well, the plan wasn't for elves to be reincarnated either, and yet they do have to be from time to time. So, I don't think that counter-argument works against that idea, so I think it is reasonable to conclude that men probably also have some kind of imprint of their body on their spirit, thus whenever he goes to Mondos, and then Mondos and Monwe and all them decide, okay, we're going to reincarnate him because that's what Luthien wants and Baron wants, and let him have it. Once that's decided they should be able to reincarnate him in the same way that they can reincarnate elves by observing his fea and figuring out, okay, so this is how his body was composed and we're going to put that back together. That being the case, I see no reason to think that his body would, you know, the, the memory of his body would be that of one that has only one hand. Naturally, he's supposed to have two and he only has the one hand problem for a very short span of time, actually. It's not clear exactly how long it is between when Karkaroth bites off his hand and how, and, you know, between that point, Luthien takes care of him for a while, then ends up finally going back to Doriath. 
and then they go hunting for Karkaroth. It's not clear how long that was, but it clearly couldn't have been a huge amount of time. You know, maybe a couple months at most, I would think, because Karkaroth is rampaging all over the north of Beleriand, and with a Silmaril burning up his insides, you don't it doesn't make any sense that he would have lasted like a year or something. Baron is already in his 30s at least, I'm pretty sure, by the time he even begins the quest of the Silmaril. I forget his exact, exact age, and I'm not even 100% sure that it's actually 100% clear in the Silmarillion anyway. I think you would have to go to the Annals of Beleriand or something in one of the History of Middle-Earth volumes to really piece that together. But one way or another, the point being his life as a one-handed person is pretty short compared to his life as a two-handed person. So, to the extent that his spirit has a memory of his body, it's going to be primarily as a two-handed individual, I would think. Now, this brings up an interesting comparison, because there is one other person who we know would have potentially been reincarnated who also has only one hand, and that's Mithros. And actually, Thinking about that has sparked another idea for a video that I'll probably do later, just kind of comparing the two of them, because they're the only two individuals in the entire Legendarium to have lost a hand. Uh, but that's for another video. My main point here is that Mithros also lost a hand. And kind of like Morgoth and Sauron, one might conclude that Mithros, if he is reincarnated, would only be reincarnated with one hand. And the reason for that is, after he loses that hand, he kind of has a sort of redemption arc, but then he just keeps falling back into doing really nasty, evil things because of the Oath of Feanor, including you know attacking and killing most everybody in Doriath, and then doing the same thing again to the refugees at you know, the mouths of Syrian, Mithros cannot stop himself from doing really bad things because he feels trapped by his oath. And then when he finally gets a Silmaril, he gets it and it burns his remaining hand so bad that he chucks it into the earth and it's gone forever. So when Mithros dies by casting himself into the earth with the Silmaril, he's gotten to a point where he has defined so much of his life as a one-handed person, and interestingly enough, one of the other things we know about Mithros is that after he loses his right hand, he actually ends up learning to use his sword with his left hand even better than he ever did with his right hand. So not only did his actions in pursuit of the Silmaril go a long way to looking like kind of a Morgoth slash Sauron you know, character arc where he's just going to be more and more focused on that really bad thing that has him trapped in the one bodily form that he's got. He also kind of learns to live with that body by training himself to be left-handed in a way that he wasn't previously. So it might actually be the case that if Mithros were reincarnated, he would be reincarnated with a left hand but no right hand. And as a result, continue to be left-handed. Baron, on the other hand, of course, does not have this problem. He is, you know, he loses his hand, certainly not by any choice of his own, really. He's trying to use the Silmaril to defend Luthien, and we don't get any indication of anything that he does after this point that is, you know, really clearly him learning to live with just one hand. I mean, we know that he has just one hand, but there's nothing like the whole Mithros line about him learning to use his sword with his left hand as well as his right. Nothing like that. And there's nothing that he does after that point that is even really in a quest to regain the Silmaril. In fact, if Karkaroth hadn't come rampaging on the borders of Doriath itself, it doesn't seem like Baron would have even done anything else to try to gain the Silmaril back, because... When Thingol hears their story, he kind of softens up and he's like, okay, you know, you can have my daughter, even though I wasn't keen on the idea. So, Baron doesn't have a history in the way that Mithros does, 
And Mithros' history as a one-handed person is much longer as well, and he has way more of the defining points in his life after he loses that hand. So in a comparison between the two, if we're going to look at that, Baron certainly seems much more likely to have the probability of getting his other hand back when he's reincarnated. Now there's one other thing that I wanted to touch on here, and I was going to look up in the Lost Tales the full version of the story just to make sure there wasn't anything, but unfortunately it's all still boxed up because we still have not enough bookshelf space in our house and <laughs> some of my books are still in the garage. In The Lost Tales, there is a longer, more extended version of the battle between Baron and the Green Elves that he's living with and the dwarves who sacked Doriath and killed Thingol. And in that battle, Baron takes on the leader of the dwarves and kills him in single combat. And in the Silmarillion, this gets compressed way down to... There's almost nothing there. Uh, it just says that he kills him and he wrests the Silmaril with the, you know, the Nalgamir from him. But in the Lost Tales version, it goes into a lot more detail. And as my memory goes, it actually talks about, you know, like Baron actually ends up kind of on the worst end of the fight and ends up being like on the ground about to get smashed by this, you know, dwarf with either his axe or his hammer or whatever he's wielding. And it's kind of almost by luck that he ends up winning the battle. In the Silmarillion, you don't get that impression at all. You just get the idea that he beats him and that's it. Which makes, you know, some sense anyway, because Baron is, you know, called in some place or other one of the, you know, one of the better warriors of the, you know, the time that he lives in. And he's, you know, it's funny because Baron's main achievement has nothing to do with fighting at all. And in fact, most of the work is done by his girlfriend, but, you know, that's another story. Uh, but in the Lost Tales version, the Lord of the Dwarves that he fights, you know, is also this really tough guy. And so I was wondering if in the Lost Tales version it says anything in the more extended account of Baron using only one hand or something to this effect. And I don't think it does, based on my memory. I could be wrong. But the interesting thing that we can kind of glean, at least from the general, you know, parts of the story, is that he's fighting a really competent fighter, and he's only got one hand. It seems unlikely that Baron would be able to really fight off a super competent dwarven warrior with the handicap of having only one hand. Now, it's not impossible, of course. You can wield a sword one-handed, and that's no problem. But it is harder to go up against a two-handed, you know, weapon-wielding person with only one hand to use. And aside from the fact that in the Lost Tales version, it seems like he's kind of on the ropes at one point. I don't remember there being any indication that this was due to anything other than the, you know, supreme competence of the dwarf who he's fighting. So, it seems highly unlikely, based on just that element of the story, that he would have only one hand. That just doesn't seem to really fit. So, taking all of this together, it seems like probably Baron did have two hands. I mean, why wouldn't he? If the Valar are going to reincarnate him, why wouldn't they give him his other hand back? I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. Especially since... Baron is such an exception to the rule, it doesn't really make any sense that, you know, if, if a man is going to get reincarnated at all, they would have to necessarily follow any particular rules in the first place. I mean, he's literally the one and only guy that this ever happens to, and so he is an exception. <laughs> his whole case is an exception. So, if his whole case is an exception, why not make all the exceptions and just give him his hand? You know, I mean, there's no reason not to. I literally can't think of a single reason why Baron would be reincarnated with only one hand. I mean, maybe you could make the argument that, you know, that's kind of the price of being reincarnated for a, a second short mortal life, but that doesn't really seem to be the thrust of the idea. 
because the Valar, when they you know give this choice to Luthien, the only real price that seems to be paid is the fact that Luthien becomes mortal. And that's it. I mean, how is Baron paying for anything anyway? I mean, Baron is... What what price is Baron paying? It's Luthien who's bailing him out. He's not bailing himself out, to use a really odd, you know, prison metaphor. Uh, but anyway, the point being, like, Luthien is the one who is having to give up something to get what she wants. Baron is... He doesn't... There's nothing in the text, anyway, that indicates that he has to give up anything to get what he wants. The only thing we're really told is that he kind of lingers in Mondos longer than would have been normal waiting for Luthien, which is interesting, but there's, a, even with that, there's nothing in the text that indicates that this comes at some cost. So, the only price that seems to be paid by anybody, as far as the story goes, is Luthien becoming mortal. That's it. So, at the end of the day... All the arguments seem to be in favor of Baron having two hands. And most of these arguments, if not all of them really, are extremely circumstantial. It has to be admitted. But the only real thing, I will say this, there is one tiny argument that I think could be made in favor of Baron being one-handed, and that is the fact that he is called Baron Erkamion, which means Baron One-Handed, the one of uh, you know the one hand. And he gets this name after losing his Silmaril, which it seems a little odd, perhaps, to say that he gets this epithet after losing the Silmaril when his existence after that is so short, because. He, you know, after he loses his Silmaril, Luthien heals his wound, they go back to Doriath, and then almost immediately he goes and gets killed. Like, I mean, why, you know, that's a really short amount of time in which to gain a nickname <laughs> and, and have it stick, right? Uh, but I could still see, even in that vein, it making sense, because... Like, after he leaves Doriath, when he comes back to life, he's never seen by mortal men again. So who's even going to call him that? I mean, the elves potentially could, I guess. But the reason he's called the one-handed is because he lost his Silmaril with his hand. And even if he gets his other hand back when he's reincarnated, it would still make sense to call him that because the one thing he's really remembered for is still associated with the loss of that hand. So, I don't think that argument is terribly strong in favor of him not having both hands when he's reincarnated. I mean, it's a little bit of an argument, but all these arguments are really circumstantial because we just don't have any direct evidence, really. So... That's, you know, as far as I can tell, those are really the only arguments for or against Baron having both hands. And I think I come down on the side of Baron probably had both hands. I mean, it just, it doesn't really make any sense why he wouldn't. There's no reason why the Valar wouldn't give him back his hand. There's no particular reason to think, you know, that he would have been stuck with only one hand because of, you know, Morgoth or Sauron-like tendencies that led him stuck in a you know, a particular body. I mean, none of that applies. So, that's my reasoning. Uh, if anybody else has any other reasons that they think would apply to this particular case, or if anybody's got quick access to their Lost Tales volume and might check my memory, you know, that could be useful too. Leave that in the comments below. But apart from that, if you did like the video, make sure you give it a like, share it around, comment your own thoughts below, of course. Make sure you subscribe to catch all my future content. If you're on YouTube, make sure you click that bell icon. Check the description below for other platform links, social links. Don't forget I've got a Discord server, and I drop plenty of Tolkien-related trivia questions over on the platform formerly known as Twitter. And I've got support links and a Zero Shoes affiliate link in the description below as well. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namariye. 
Thanks to all my channel supporters, especially Elf Friends Paul Leone and Nathan Dufour.